gentlemen, join us, Laura DeWitt. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Epic. That was a great theme. Thank you. See, <laughs> welcome to the show. Joining me at this time, we have uh, we have Brian Gibson, or Gibby, the guy that we usually make fun of, uh, Michael Burhan, who joins us from London, uh, Frank Ward, who's here with us as well, and Mike Payton, the uh, host of the show. Or not the host of the show. <laughs> I quit, apparently. He got, he got promoted uh, quick. Yeah, he did, didn't he, man? Damn. Just shows up, takes over. <laughs> Guy. He runs the station. I apologize. Cool. Um, so thank you so much for joining the show. We've got some questions here. We, we're going to open up the lines for callers to come in. Uh, for those listening, it's 760-512-7247 if you'd like to ask your questions. But we got some of our own first. And I think the one that's uh, daunting on everybody's mind is the toilets. Do they flush opposite of the Americans? <laughs> oh, the toilets. Yes, yes, they do go the other way. But actually, the most upsetting thing about American toilets is why is your water level so damn high? You know, ours is just really, really low, and then you go to an American airport, and the water level's like up to the seat level. It freaks me out. <laughs> just in case you, you know, want to jump in for a little bit, you know, it's a hot day. I really, <laughs> really limp. don't want to make any bodily contact with that water, no. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have airport it. <laughs> yeah, I... so that's the first thing I noticed. Not the direction of the flush, the actual freaky water level. Yeah, it is ridiculously high. Uh, I, I'm going to blame Gibby on that one for uh, design. He's an architect. Yeah. That's how yeah. I design shit, okay? <laughs> yeah, we and they all flush everything. themselves as well. They kind of decide when you're done, they go flush themselves. That was That's a building design. We yeah, didn't want to touch it. We're lazy in this discussion. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we have that nowhere here, really. Really? Yeah, not They're not much. lazy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We just enjoy pushing buttons. I don't know. <laughs> um, it sounds like uh, Australia is an awesome place to live. America, of course, we're lazy. We got people like Gibby uh, that don't really do anything. But the government's shut down. Amazing. Yeah, the government's shut down. We just don't do anything here. Um, but we're bringing you on the show tonight because we want to talk about your music. And at what age did you get into music? Because you you have so many videos up on YouTube. Oh well, I was really young actually. I um. I started school, it was in like the first grade of school, and my classroom teacher said to my mum, you should really do something about music for this kid, sort of thing, because my parents weren't really thinking of it, and they didn't really do much music themselves. Mm -hmm. So then I went and did some group piano lessons, just sort of the fun little clapping and singing and all that stuff. That would have been at about age five or six, sort of first grade, and yeah, just haven't really looked back since then. That was when I started piano. Nice. Uh, what yeah. other what, what other instruments do you play besides uh, piano and violin, or just that? I play the trumpet because I wanted to be in the band in high school, so I play that really really badly. Please don't ask me to post a video; it won't be pretty. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I like to sing, but I'm not trained in that as such. I just like to do it, so that's not really a have lessons kind of thing for me. That's another video. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done a couple of singing ones, so there you go. Um, and then, you know, just the, the usual can play a few chords of guitar kind of thing, and that's all. Sweet, sweet. Um, you recently just released a CD, which I, I might have I've had in my truck going back and forth to Washington, D.C. Uh, oh, on each trip. thank you. <laughs> um, do you plan on releasing another one or any other future projects like that? Possibly. I'm, talk I'm talking with Taylor. We're not quite sure what exactly we want to do right now, but we might do another one, or I could even do a solo piano one. I'm not sure, but it it may be in the works. Ah, oh, sweet. I am excited. Like I said, it's in my truck now, and I'm pretty sure it's the CD in there. <laughs> if, if you get in my car and you look at the, uh, the glove compartment, it's a weird selection because it goes your CD and then the Lonely Island Gang. Which... Yeah, that's a little bit strange. <laughs> just those two, eh? Just those two. It, it is. I don't know why. It's just the two that are in there. And, uh... Oh, long truck trips are rough. <laughs> it, it's a hike, but I do. yours stays in more than the Lonely Island one because... Uh, oh, that thank one, you. Because it's better music. Yeah. That, that would be so much fun. We did that in about a week. I went over to the States. We recorded that. And, yeah, we had so little time to do it. We were, like, pushing out three tracks a day, you know? Oof. Yeah. Do you, do you get to come over to the States a lot? 
Uh, not really. I well, obviously for that trip, I sort of footed my own bill, sort of paid all our money up front to go and make the CD. But then the trip before that, where I met Taylor at E3, that was great because that was all paid for by the convention people and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I went to the States. Actually, I went to the States three times last year, which is ridiculous. Yeah. It's nice. And who knows? I might be back soon. You never know. be awesome. You can come to the uh, Philly Wizard World. That'd be awesome. Since Philly most of us Wizard are, World. Yeah, that's most of us. Uh, most of us are from New Jersey. Uh, Frank's from Iowa, but we consider him to be Jersey. Ah, uh, New Jersey. So you've got um, that from like Six Flags Park. Oh, yeah. That's about yeah. an hour away from where we're staying. Um, we're, we're, we're closer. We're outside of Philadelphia. Uh, like I said, Michael's over at uh, Burhan's over at uh, in London, and Mike Payton, the uh, station director, he's up in New York. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So you got to come to like the Wizard Worlds and the Comic Cons out in our area, which would be awesome. Yeah, but not during winter, eh? No, we no. We want to go there in January. <laughs> we well, just had our have... Comic Con this weekend, so I mean, it's just starting to get a little bit cold here. So it would have been a good time to have come during the uh, October Comic Con here. Yeah, that's that's sort of hard when you're employed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You, you mean you mean being uh, an artist isn't a, a lush career choice? <laughs> It's not. I'm on a pretty strict contract. I need to work, and um, I usually have some time off in January, but January is just awful weather for, well, at least the East Coast. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely up here in the Northeast where most of us are residing. Um, Speaking of, like, the the, the Comic-Cons and stuff like that, uh, you do a lot of cosplay for your videos. What was your favorite cosplay costume? Oh, you see, my attitude towards cosplay... I don't pretend to be serious about it. Mm-hmm. I just I just thought it was funny, you know. I'm not an artist because there are a lot of people who really make these extravagant, wonderful things, and that's not me. I will admit that I'll buy them, I'll piece them together, I'll borrow them just for fun. So to me, like, wearing that Power Ranger suit was pretty hilarious because that cost me, like, what was it, $20 from some little Asian store somewhere. <laughs> That's cool. And and I just thought it would be funny. Like, I'm not really crazy into cosplay. I just do it because it's funny. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of the costumes you've wore are awesome, uh, the way that you you coincide them with your music videos. I just... Yeah. Just to give it another level, like, I don't take myself too seriously with that kind of stuff at all, so... I just want to make people laugh and go, isn't she stupid? Like, that's (laughs) hilarious. (laughs) So... Uh, I don't think you've actually got that message across. I think they think that's great music by that excellent cosplayer. <laughs> well, that was an inadvertent message, though. <laughs> well, you know, there's somebody sitting there going, that's not the right shade of pink. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. And some of them get angry when I don't dye my hair the right color. Like, I'm not really that into it to, to get the wigs and dye the hair and stuff. Because it is about the music to me. It needs to be authentic. Authentic. Oh my gosh, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> so, uh, with all these music videos you've done, what, what's your favorite video game? Do you play video games a lot? Um, actually, <laughs> I went to my parents' house on the weekend to clean out some stuff, and I found an Atari. I found a Sega Master System 2. I found three Nintendo Entertainment Systems, three Super Nintendos, and a Nintendo 64. Let <laughs> me give you my address. <laughs> <laughs> Send all those goodies to me. And a whole bunch of games that I only ever really play some old style games. And I, I literally do not have time these days because I'm sort of working full time or more. Plus, on the side, I do roller derby, and then on the side, I do YouTube. So any of my free time is going to be sucked up into one of those two things. I literally don't have time for gaming, which is sad. Donate to Burham. <laughs> but it's I also really fun. awesome because it means that I spend my free time doing stuff with, like, real people, which I think is much healthier. So there you go. I don't need real people. Donate to Burham. <laughs> It's normally it's funny because you say that because uh, Gibby normally as we're doing this show he uh, he likes to play video games and talk to the people on there rather than talk to us here on the show. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> he's one of those guys. 
I may be playing a game right now. Yep. <laughs> as you just heard him confess, he's playing a game now. So as you can tell, uh, Gibby is uh, antisocial. So I don't that's why so we that's love it. That's okay. We all have antisocial moments. I do as well, definitely. Uh, my are 24-7. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's because this, like, the public doesn't want you out there with them. That's the only problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just better we let Gibby do this. It, that's like giving a three-year-old a game to entertain him so he doesn't throw a temper tantrum. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Girl's fit. <laughs> when he uh, cries, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Got to leave the people restaurant. Just, people just look at us like we're bad parents. Yeah, we hang up on him on Skype just to get him off. And, you know, the funny thing is when we hang up on Skype on him, he's still talking when he dials back in, like, mid-conversation, not oh, stopping. Oh, <laughs> We make him stand in the naughty E corner. <laughs> Dunn's cap and all. Um, yeah, as you were saying in your uh, just a few minutes ago, you, you're into roller derby. So how's that going? I, I, I know I've only seen one thing about roller derby, and it was the, the – Awful Paul Heyman uh, movie. Um, <laughs> Which movie was that? Uh, I can't Paul, even think of the name of it. Paul Heyman movie. I don't know. He was a commentator in it. I don't know what he. <laughs> that's it. Okay. It was. Got, it was. Is that awful. roller derby? Or no, was no. Something else, wasn't it? It was like death some, ball yeah. or something. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But um, I don't know. I... They were on wheels. Oh, they're on wheels. There you go. <laughs> I started about a year ago, I think, and I don't know. I don't know what keeps me going back to it because it's actually really terrifying because I play um, the one with the star on the helmet usually, which is called the jammer. So basically you have to get through a gauntlet of blockers who are out to kill you. So usually you will get hit the most and you will sustain the most injuries. But something about it just sort of, keeps keeps you coming back. I think it's really important to... I like the team sport aspect of it, because let's face it, I would not do any exercise if it was not a team sport. And I don't know, there's just something hardcore and a little... Um, I think all of the people who play it are somewhat the underdog or have been in their lives at some point. That seems to be the unifying feature across the types of people who play this game. Don't ask me to understand it. I don't know why, but that's sort of what I've noticed. And everyone is just genuinely nice, you know, the nicest group of people I've ever met, really. So, yeah, that's, that's why I play, a bit of the physical violence and also the social aspect. Nice. So, basically, that's your version of professional wrestling, but it's on skates. Yeah, it's on skates, which just makes it that much more terrifying and dangerous. Yeah, I, I would never do that. I am not coordinated. I walk into walls with no wheels on my feet, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do not do that then. You actually do need a little bit of coordination. And you actually, for this game, you need to have zero fear. Because if you have fear, then you just, you won't be able to do it well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I would flinch every time I see somebody go by me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh no, they're coming for me again. I don't know, I played a tournament a week ago, and I was I, my whole body was covered in bruises. I smashed my nose, had a bleeding nose, but it didn't end up being broken, and I got a black eye. So I looked a complete disaster. But I'll be back for more, you know? That does not stop me. There you go. Do you get any good, have you gotten any good shots in on some of the uh, others? Well, I don't generally play a blocker, and blockers are the ones who do the hitting because they are trying to place big hits on the jammers. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just trying to take the hits and not get knocked around too much by it and actually just try and bust through, like, the clump of blockers. So, yeah, it's not really strategic for a jammer to hit massively hard. You've just got to, you've just got to get through, and you've got to be quick. Sweet. I, yeah. I would not volunteer for that position because I... I'm a pansy. I... Yeah. Well, look, you don't volunteer. You just sort of... um. You're just sort of better at one position or the other, and that tends to be me, yeah. Your name gets pulled up, and you're, you're, you're the one. Yeah, you get given that little star helmet, and you go, oh, okay. May the odds take... forever be in your favor. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like you take the blue pill or the red pill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is definitely a tough sport. I know I could never do it. I, I'm I'm a wuss. I, I would cry the first time. <laughs> Somebody would be like, oh, all right. There are, tears. there are definite tears, but men's leagues are starting up, so never fear. You can have a go. Oh, I, I would be in the hospital. Okay. 
Actually, that happens. There are broken <laughs> jaws, broken noses, broken ankles, broken everything. Oh, oh God. I'm just cringing yeah, I, at the fact. I'd die in the women's league. <laughs> <laughs> you would, actually. Most of these guys would kill to hit like these women hit. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> um, just real quick. <laughs> Uh, just real quick to open up to our uh, our listeners out there. Remember, you guys can call in at 760-512-7247 here on the uh, network, Mega Powers Radio, or join us in our chat here and uh, just shoot us the questions. Uh, she's on the show. Take advantage of it. Uh, don't try roller derby because it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, guys, you guys got anything else? Uh, Gibby, uh, are you still playing your data game? Hey, hey, hey. Now just put him back. Put him back. <laughs> go, 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 look, go look at the screen again. Squirrel. Squirrel. Uh, Mr. Burhead? Did he fall I'll, off? I'll mute myself, though. <laughs> the, the roller derby. I was gasping at the whole roller derby news. <laughs> kind of made me gone. faint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hugging your pillow. Okay. Scared. Uh, the other question I've got for you, actually, is what made you start the YouTube channel? Um, that is really a random thing. I did a little act in a university review, just some some silly little blindfolded Mario piano thing, and I put it up on YouTube, and then, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I wait, There was like six months that went by, and I didn't do anything else. I started putting up a few more for fun, and then I think maybe it was that Power Rangers one I did. One of them that I put up just sort of blew up overnight you know it went from a few hundred views to like a hundred thousand views overnight and all of a sudden my subscribers went from like 10 to like thousands just literally in 24 hours and I guess YouTube is a little bit like a drug once you start it you just keep posting videos (laughs) and um, that's the sort of danger of it too because you post a video and you go why am I posting this Um, do I just want to share this music? Is this an artistic outlet for me? Is it the validation that I'm seeking from all these people that I don't even know? So I guess you just have to decide what your intentions are and why you're doing it because it's very easy to get caught up in the quasi-fame thing. (laughs) Yeah, but nowadays I just post really... um, not that frequently. I'm trying to do maybe two or three a month, something like that, just as a hobby on the side whenever I have time for it. And it's literally, it's just fun. It's just sharing music that I like. That's cool. I, I know I was first introduced to you uh, via the Power Rangers one. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably the one that sort of went big because I sort of thought, oh, wouldn't it be hilarious if I wore this pink lycra suit and played that theme? <laughs> Yeah, that's the one that, like, uh, my buddy just messaged me saying, hey, you got to check this out. And then from there, I just, you know, it's that chain where you just spend hours on YouTube watching video after video after video. And yes, because YouTube always links you to the next one. What about these? Recommended videos. Yep. <laughs> uh, Burhan, any more questions? or? I'm uh, just trying to think of uh, what else that we've got for you. Have you, okay, here's another one. Have you ever been trolled before? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There must be that one person that comments on your videos <laughs> yes, that annoys I, the hell out of you. Uh, actually, I really like my trolls. Um, I really enjoy them. There's one kid called Charlie Bucket, and he's actually up to Charlie Bucket 53 because he's been blocked that many times by YouTube and has had to set up new accounts. <laughs> so good old Charlie Bucket. He's my friend, though. The thing about trolls is I think they just want your attention, and once you give them some positive attention, they will stop, they'll stop trolling you. Like, and if you call them out on their behavior, they'll actually apologize for it too. It's a really funny little study <laughs> of human nature. Yeah, Char- Charlie Bucket's a sweetie. <laughs> well, we should try that with Gibby. I don't think we've ever been positive with him. Gibby, <laughs> <laughs> we love to try it. No, it didn't work. No, it didn't. Gibby, <laughs> you're, you're a nice gentleman. 
Yeah, yeah that's so right. the, the trolls, I, I actually find them pretty hilarious. And then the people that I find actually more annoying than the trolls are the ones who write to me and say, don't feed the trolls, don't respond, don't do this. And I just go, oh, excuse me, do you run this YouTube channel? Do you have a YouTube channel? I can do what I like. I don't need advice from you. They're more annoying. I am your god. Don't yeah, be- I'll speak to my trolls if I want to. They're Don't my trolls. <laughs> For now, until they grow up and escape. Yeah. Yeah. Until they, they go underneath bridges. <laughs> Ruining yeah. for the day. Start killing goats. <laughs> that, that was random. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, the offensive ones I'll just block, and I probably have blocked hundreds of people by now, but... um. That's just what you got to do. Yeah. Who was the one person though that really got under your skin? Do you do you have like that one individual, even if it's not a troll, that really got on your nerves to the point where you're like, that's it, I've had enough. I've had a guy which I've blocked twice because I'm a forgiving person. I blocked him and he wrote to me, he's like, oh please, I'm sorry, I've learned the error of my ways. I shouldn't have said those things. Please unblock me. And then he started off fine, and then he started writing some questionable things, so I blocked him again. And he's very unhappy with it. I believe he's just posted on my fan page, why did you block me? You're such a nasty person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I only really said those funny. expletives. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't actually think of one single person on YouTube who has upset me. It just hasn't happened. I mean, you develop a really, really thick skin, and most stuff I actually, I laugh at. That's the only way you can do it. Uh, we at Fanboys Anonymous, we uh, we had a run-in with a couple of trolls, and just it, it was a running joke just to watch them just go at yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, some of them aren't trolls or don't even realize they're being trolls, so that's sort of a fine line there. Some of them just want to tear you down. The most common thing, the negative comments I get are made by people who are jealous of what I'm doing but don't actually have the balls to do it themselves, Mm -hmm. do not have the guts to and the time and the commitment uh, to start recording videos and put them on for the whole world to see, which is sort of a brave thing to do when it opens yourself up to criticism from everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I find those jealous people are the ones that want to pull you down because they can't pull themselves up. But oh, I wouldn't definitely. call them trolls. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a different kind. Of, like the trolls, for for me, the the whole definition for them are people who just, as you stated, wanted your attention. Whereas yeah. you have those who get very um, jealous and very angry and aggressive at times. Because all they want to do is sort of cut you down, but necessarily mm-hmm. those people aren't trolls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just real people with some jealousy and insecurity issues. Well, of course. So um, let me ask you a, another big question. Where do you see this going? I, I know you said that you're going to um, probably do like three videos a month and, and just take mm-hmm. it easy sort of thing. What if there's like uh, becomes like even more a surge to this where people want you to dedicate more time to it are you just going to keep it at a steady pace or um maybe focus a bit more time on the channel i'm not sure because the thing is that the internet is very very fickle people will love you one day and not care about you the next and i realize that i guess you have to sort out from i mean i'm going to be brutally frank here and talk about money because i am full-time employed here in sydney And I, at the moment, cannot reconcile giving up the sort of jobs I have here to spend more time on something that, at the moment, doesn't generate a lot of income for me. Because you really have to decide from your fan base who is financially supporting you and who is not. I know it sounds sort of crass to talk about money that way, but I'm not giving up some perfectly good jobs here to um, dedicate time to something that might not make me money. And I'm not saying I'm a money grabber. Everyone just needs money to survive. Do you know what of I mean? Of course. For so sure. So it's all about dedicating, yeah, how much time you're willing to dedicate for free. Because most of the videos I post, I don't I don't have um, licensing for all of them, so I can't monetize all of them. But even the ones that I can monetize, it's not an awful lot of money, actually. People assume that I'm sort of rolling in it and I'm rich thousands of dollars from these videos. 
but I assure you it's not the case. So the good thing about YouTube, I think, is that it opens opportunities for other things. Like, because of YouTube, I got to fly to LA and perform that convention and meet Taylor and Kyle. So I think what I'd like to do is maybe branch out and do some more CDs, but I'm just not sure about pouring too much time into YouTube. I mean, I'll still keep it up on the side, but you just really have to decide what's going on with it from a financial point of view. For sure. Because uh, I, I could speak, for, uh, at least on my day, I, I do the same thing. I do uh, wrestling on the weekends as a hobby on Saturdays and uh, try to do Fanboys Anonymous and this on the, the weeknights. But, you know, it, yeah. it does come a point where you draw that line of, well, you know, my current job feeds the feeds me. So. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I've sort of juggling quite a few really awesome jobs here in Sydney, so I'm happy with how I'm doing career-wise. YouTube is really it's just a bonus and it has opened some doors and I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, you just have to be careful with the nature of it because people will love you and then if, you know, a couple of years later it'll it'll all be gone. So you don't want to give up and forfeit some opportunities here in Sydney in real life for internet ones that may not come to fruition if that makes sense. Oh, that's a very logical perspective. Have you tried yeah. to reach out to Elton John to do a duet with him? <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe go crazy and hook, look, uh, get T Pain to help you out or something. Let me tell you, that's a whole other realm of politics, the YouTube and the subscriber count politics. Because um, basically, when you're asking to do collabs, you should probably have a similar amount of subscribers as the person you're asking to do it with. No, no, go go for the top. <laughs> Michael Bolt. They, they they won't listen to someone like me. It's it's very high school, and it's a it's an unspoken rule. With the, it's a numbers game. That's what it is. So I don't play the numbers game. I mean, I I don't care how many subscribers people have. I'll collaborate with them if they're good. And there's evidence of that on my channel. But a lot of people, and I don't blame them, who are using YouTube as their sole income, um, they have to be very shrewd and businesslike about it. They need to use people who will help them claw their way to the top. Um, there's no point in sugarcoating that because that's the way it is on YouTube. It just depends if you're doing it for a hobby, fine, do it with anyone. But if you're doing it as your full-time income, you need to be thinking about these things. How can this person help me? The thing is, from a brand and a marketing perspective, I can understand it totally, but I think sometimes people can get a bit... I'm not going to name no names of like certain YouTubers, but people do get a bit um, stiff up a lip with the way that they work. And the, the problem is, they people tend to forget with all the money making and stuff that's going on there. YouTube's a community, and mm. it's a way for you to interact with other people. You know, a, a lot of people use its promotional tools. It's similar to Facebook, it's similar to Tumblr, similar to all those other venues. And it's literally the only thing that makes it different is it's you're, you're doing videos and you're earning money off of it. You know, it's it's like it's Facebook's like sold your likeness for advertising and allowed you to monetize yourself so they could like sell your pictures on and stuff like that. That's yeah. all it is. It, it's still a social community. Um, the only difference it, it has now is that it's basically people are earning money off of it and they've been given the opportunity to earn money off of it. Yeah. Um, but in a sense, it. I, I think that people tend to obscure the fact that Everybody, if you break it down, everyone's the same. It doesn't matter on the subscriber count or the views. Everyone has their own thing. And I, I always think, because I'm, I'm an actor myself, and when it comes to creating, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter who I create with as long as we have the same ideas, we have the same focus, and we can do something rather unique together. I would work with someone who's little known, that you know, you never know who the person is, and I would work some with someone who has some name value to them but it doesn't matter. I've worked with big actors. I've worked with small actors. I've worked with all mm. types of actors. As long as I can create with that person, that's all that matters in the end of the day, what comes uh, what comes together. And the, as I said, the thing that people tend to have done now is obscure that. And because it's so obscure, because everyone's like, oh, I'm at this level, I'm, you know, I don't need to talk to lowly people at this level, it doesn't help you because... In the end, once you fall down, you're going to be clawing to those people to help you again to get you back up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with what you said, but I think once you introduce money into that equation, um, it changes and people start getting really smart because they think, oh, this person's got a few more subscribers than me, so I'm going to collaborate with them and then our fan bases can kind of swap over and 
I mean, I like, it's a very idealistic idea to work with whoever for however yeah. many fans they have. And I'll work with whoever, but it's just a time constraint thing for me. I don't have the time because, as you can imagine, I have a lot of people wanting to do stuff with me. And it's not because, oh, you have less subscribers than me. It's because um, sometimes I struggle to even get videos up myself. It's just a time constraint sort of thing. Oh, I agree. So, I totally yeah. agree. Uh, we we actually had a question from our chat. Uh, they, the five J guy he asked for uh, if uh, what do Australians think of Columbus Day? <laughs> Columbus, what your our yeah. Australia Day? Uh, it, I get it's our Columbus. Like today in the states, it's Columbus Day. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> wouldn't matter um, at all to Australians. No, I don't. I just... Well, I mean, we have a version of that day, but a lot of people colloquially refer to it as Invasion Day. <laughs> That's sort of what it is. It's um, we That's celebrate the Australia day. day on um, January 26th. So, yeah, we we call that Invasion Day. But you know, we just go along. You have a barbecue. You go and watch some boats or something <laughs> low key like that. Yeah, so what are the big holidays? Yeah. What are your big holidays? Yeah, I, I guess we don't really think very much of. Columbus Day. I mean, we're sort of in, enthralled by your fascination with Thanksgiving, that's for sure. Uh, we just want to get we, fat and watch football. Yeah, we like to eat. <laughs> yeah, that sort of, and that's another invasion day, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we eat our feelings away, all right? <laughs> yeah, turkey, turkey, turkey. Yeah, we killed all these people. We'll eat more turkey. <laughs> and we feel really bad, and the only way we can comfort ourselves is with food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the gravy. Yeah, we don't really do the food thing. Actually, you can attack the brute, so I don't mind. <laughs> okay, we got your okay to invade, so I'm going to yeah, let no, well, well, we know. <laughs> it's not just that. We dumped all of our prisoners in Australia, so that was a bit... <laughs> uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Just That well, was them. It, it's got to be you, because you're, you're a London con like, contact. I, I, I'm a project. I'm kind of like the people that followed them back to their country. That's <laughs> my ancestors. It's like, oh, there, we're coming over there. And they... You know. <laughs> I said it in a rather Irishy accent. Oh damn, we're coming over there. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> that was some weird accent that I have not. I was gonna go into my Indian impression, that I then suddenly a part of me was like, you're being racist. So I just went back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> abort, abort, abort. That's gonna be bad. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know Mike uh, Payton was saying before, is that what, what are the big holidays over there in Australia? Big holidays. We don't really have them. I mean, the thing that makes me sad is that Halloween is not really a huge deal over here. Oh. I mean, yeah, you'll still get a handful of small kids trick-or-treating, but it's definitely not a big thing. So I guess our big holidays are Australia Day in January, and, you know, it's just Christmas and Easter, really. We oh, we have um we have Anzac Day, of course, in April. So that's um, Gallipoli and all that. Uh, that's the uh, Anzac Day stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. So that's sort of a commemoration of Memorial Day there. That's a big one because that's a public holiday. Um, what else? We don't seem to have as many days as you guys. Oh, yeah, definitely not as many as Canada. Uh, I, I've worked in Canada before, and uh, they make up holidays, and they feel like they don't have enough. Uh, I mean, we have the Queen's birthday. What is that even? We get a public <laughs> holiday on the Queen's birthday. I mean, I, I've been in uh, Quebec and have had uh, – I've flown into Montreal, and they'll have family day. And I ask what the holiday is about, and their response is, well, there wasn't really anything between New Year's and uh, Easter, so we made up a day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it, though. We have pretty much no days in the second half of the year, though. Queen's birthday is in June, and like days in April. Australia Day is – January, Easter, April. We've sort of got nothing between June and Christmas. It's pretty bleak. <laughs> yeah, I think all we get here is, well, we got the 4th of July, of course, which is in July, and yeah. uh, <laughs> Labor Day, and then uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and those are and Memorial Day, and those are the only days we actually get off. Well, I get off. Uh, I know yeah. the government gets a lot more days off. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, Frank, do you have any uh, questions for her? The only thing I need to know. Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the only question I need answered. What's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, my favorite Pokemon. I have okay. to. Okay. That's it. This is a difficult question 
but I just really like Squirtle. I know it's simple. He's just one of those main ones, but he's just adorable, and, and I love water types. So, actually, mm, oh, oh. I like Squirtle, but I won't generally use him in my lineup. I'll always use Gengar. Gang- Squirtle is a fantastic choice. The Squirtle Squad, ah, oh, I'm obsessed with Squirtle. <laughs> And no love yeah, for Charmander. He's the, he's yeah, the no cutest, love for Charmander. But um, yeah, I actually have a lot of love for Gengar. You can pretty much defeat anyone using him. <laughs> Charmander's defense. I have this rebuttal to say. Char, Char. But we, Squirtle can put you out. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's adorable. Like, like no Gengar time. love, hey? No Gengar love. Uh, it's hard to get in the game. <laughs> you yeah. have friends to trade with. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's pretty amazing. Frank, that was so sad. You said you had to have friends to trade with. Are you why you didn't have any friends? I'm pretty sure Gengar was one you had to train to evolve to. One? I, I thought it was Alakazam. Yeah, Alakazam, Gengar, uh, Machamp. Oh, yeah. Uh, Machamp and Machop and all of those guys. I think there was another one that you had to trade for. Golem, maybe? Mm. I don't know. It's been so long. <laughs> That was a fantastic question, Frank. Yeah, that was a good one. I'm, ever since you said she was going to be on here, I'm like, I have to know this. <laughs> so my life is complete now. Yay! Uh, Mr. Payton, any questions uh, on your end? Yeah, I want to pull it back into to music for a little bit, actually. Um, I know you, you have a lot of songs that you, you take and you love and you make your own variation of it. Has there ever been a song that you loved, but you found it too complex or just too beautiful, maybe, even that you didn't even want to attempt to put your own spin on it? Ooh. Not so far, but there are, of course, some classical pieces that were, you know, it depends what what medium it was originally composed for and whether you can do that justice on just the piano or violin, you know, the tools that I have. So not so far, but... um. You know that that series. I don't even know how you say it. It's is it Toho? You spell it like T O U T H O U. That series has got some fantastic music, um, but I'm not sure how it would go just with a piano and a violin. Whether that could do it justice. So I'm sort of scared of tackling that one. Um, everything else has been really doable, but then of course if you get music that's really uh, drum space, really sort of rock, that really needs that driving beat, the only choice is to do it with back tracks and just have the violin playing the melody. So yeah, you just have to be smart about song choice because it really depends on the instrumental medium that it was composed for originally. Hmm. And, and to spin off that in a similar vein kind of question, um, obviously your big instruments are the piano and the violin. Do, do you have any hopes to expand, or are there any instruments that even just like, wow, that's so tough for me? Like myself, I'm a guitarist, a bassist, I do a little bit of keyboards, but if I even, even attempt to play a drum set, I, I am useless. I cannot control all four limbs. I can only do the two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. I've always wanted, I find the guitar really difficult. I mean, because the way your fingers have to be so different from the violin, I find it really tiring. My hand just doesn't seem to bend that way naturally. So guitar, I've always wished I could play better than I can. And for some odd reason, I've always wanted to play the clarinet. Don't even ask me why. I guess it's just because <laughs> I've never played a woodwind instrument. Yeah, I've always just sort of wanted to know how to play the clarinet. Yeah. Cool. That's all for me, I think. Thank you. Awesome. Um, like I said, we, we opened up the lines. Anyone who wants to call in and ask some questions is 760-512-7247. Um, uh, the five J's. I don't even know what the word for five is. Uh, his favorite Pokemon is Graveler. I think he was just throwing that out there. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Poor choice, but all right. I know. Congrats. <laughs> so I, I love for everyone. He, he, he yeah. might have been pointing it out as that's one of the ones you have to trade with a friend. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, because I said, I said Golem. Okay. To get Golem. I, I haven't played that game since it was blue and red. Now it's up to like weird different colors. No, so the yeah. one that's still in my Game Boy is blue and red. <laughs> it's it's blue not red. even colors anymore. They just came out with X and Y. Oh. <laughs> so basically, they're chromosomes now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
No, oh, that's going to be an awkward choice to pick up if I pick up the wrong one. Go to the people say the city of Toronto. <laughs> um, if that's all, I mean, you're more than welcome to hang around. We, we've got two more segments left on the show. If not, I know, you, like you said, you're very busy. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, we have two segments left, which is the, the Dace Man High Five, where we're going to list our five favorite things. And uh, we have a segment called the uh, Douchebag of the Week, where normally we yell at somebody uh, celebrity-wise. Oh, yell at someone celebrity-wise. Yeah, we just we just get mad and we just start ranting about how they're jerks. Uh, Justin Bieber's made the list. Uh, Gibby has made the list from the show as well. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> so it's up to you. Uh, you're more than welcome to join around, uh, hang around if you'd like. I know you said you're busy. Um, yeah, I've probably got to get going. This week is mental for me. It was actually good we managed to find a uh, suitable time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so glad you joined. Uh, anything you want to plug away before uh, we part? Oh, I'm not really much of a plugger. I mean, I've got links to my CD on all of my videos, and Anna. that that will do. That'll do. <laughs> I still don't like putting myself out there too shamelessly. So, yeah. well, you'll never make a good plumber, then, if you can't plug. Exactly. I don't ever intend to make a good plumber. That so makes a good, good plumber is unplugging the plug. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He just inception to me. Yeah, knowledge, Bob. There you go. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the Dace Man Show and everybody's listening, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I had so much fun uh, talking with you. Um, God, oh, thank you. Wait, before you yeah, go. Yeah, no problem. Wait. Oh, wait. What's your favorite color? My favorite color? <laughs> yeah. We said on like, last week's show we are going to ask this. I just remember that. So we have like to ask Like, for you. what purpose? Just in general. Oh, that is so the most, hard. The, the most commonly used <laughs> color you could use for everything. Well, I have a lot of pink stuff, but I also really like blue and yellow. Say, so this is a really difficult question for me. <laughs> hey, I, I come out with the tough ones, all right? <laughs> okay, one from me. Easy here. One from me from an astrology, astrology perspective. What star sign are you? Ah, I'm a Gemini. Woohoo! Woohoo! I don't really like the reputation it gives us, you know, the fickle sort of twins or whatever. But, yep, Gemini star sign. Don't know if I'm typical of that sign or not, but... I know a lot of Geminis. My my dad was a Gemini. Yeah. There you go. A lot of my friends are Gemini, so I don't know. They said whatever hair he had left, he should have dyed it blonde. (laughs) (laughs) I'm joking. I'm joking. (laughs) Uh, I think that's all. Uh, if that's all, good. <laughs> Any more last-minute brain busters? <laughs> yes. Um, out of any location, what's your favorite place to be? Um, Tokyo Disney Sea, Japan. Ooh, why? Ah, <laughs> uh, I couldn't even. I just. It was the most magical place in the entire world. I was there for five days. I went back to Disney Sea three out of the five days. Um, I couldn't even. I couldn't even tell you. But that. That's my answer. Tokyo Disney Sea. <laughs> I need to go to Tokyo Disney. <laughs> that is yeah, my no, new not, life goal. not Disney. It's got to be Disney Sea. Just all the theming was amazing, and it's not like a a Sea World park like live animal shows and stuff because they don't support that it's just um the way it's all themed together it was beautiful well if you're looking for live animal shows we have gibby so that just works out (laughs) nicely for us he's part he's part bird (laughs) oh i I have a bird i love i love birds (laughs) you wouldn't like this Uh Uh oh oh yeah i know he heard that uh, yeah, he's back. How are we going to hurry up? Um, so let's get on behalf of the Dace Man Show and everybody's listening. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been a blast. Uh, and I can't stop thanking you because it was so awesome. No, yeah, thank you for having me. It was good fun. Nice, nice and chilled. And like the questions weren't awkward and all the same. So that's good. <laughs> I, I think we, we started strong awkward. with the toilet questions. Yeah, we don't we yeah, don't but... do awkward questions to guests. We do awkward toilet questions, questions to each other. Questions. Is good and and thank you for like being like original with the questions. That was it was nice. Sweet. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, right. thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. Thanks for Bye. having me. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs> you Bye. Too. Bye. <laughs>